<laughs> so, as you may know, the boy did not get a pre-screening last week. <laughs> I can't even imagine why. Honestly, sometimes I legitimately don't know why. Since one of the uh, since the one of the movies I'm gonna be at in a couple of days is Fifty Shades of Black, <laughs> that's getting a pre-screening. Wasn't there one we had a couple uh, a couple weeks ago where it was actually like like not like a big deal of a movie, but like not like a terrible movie, but it just for whatever reason suddenly didn't get a a pre-screening. Oh, um. Like, it, it, it was that one, like, it was scheduled all the way up until, like, the day that it was supposed to happen. Oh, and then they took it away. Uh, that's happened a couple of times. I think largely due to maybe, like, screen space. Um, because every theater but the new movies were playing Star Wars. And I think one of the extra <laughs> theaters was playing, like, a Rift Tracks rerun or something like that. So there, yeah, that, I, I've seen that before where something is scheduled and then it's just taken away. I can't remember what it was. Um, I remember it was something like a couple months ago. But yeah, I, I can't for the fucking life of me remember. I just remember like, like it was one where we actually had to like go on a Friday. It's like, fuck, like this place is really crowded on a Friday. I don't like this. <laughs> yeah. Like anymore, whenever I'm there on Friday, it's because they didn't pre-show one of the kids movies. So I'm the jackass while everyone's seeing, like, Star Wars or The Revenant or whatever. I'm like, me and Allison are two for Norm of the North. <laughs> they didn't want to pre-show that one. <laughs> it's, like, it's like you said, Star Wars, right? I, te <laughs> yeah. I texted you, what was it, like, Wednesday? Because I didn't know if they were eventually going to... This has happened before, too, where they it takes them until, like, Wednesday to put it on the schedule but by the time wednesday rolled around and i even think i saw somewhere where they just simply weren't doing thursday screenings of this i think i texted you like well it turns out the boys not getting shown on thursday and i'm gonna be in chicago from like friday to um sunday you want to go see it next week? <laughs> Which ended up working out perfectly since yeah. I was out of town, too. So I was like, like, oh, yeah, no, just when both of us finally get back to town, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> us and the other ten people that were in there holding off the boy until Tuesday night. Which, which that was a weird demographic in there. There was about, like, five or so people that were our age, maybe a little younger. Yeah. Then there were several, like, older folks. Mm. And then there was, like, a family of, like, five. It was was like, there? Yeah, that, that row that was in front of us. Oh, They okay. had, like, three little kids, like, ranging, like, probably, like, ages 6 through 12. Well, the boy. It must be a kid's movie. <laughs> right? Obviously. <laughs> we like, like going camping. Let's go see the forest. Like, it's just, it's so, like... It, that that was probably the the most broad cross section of people I've ever seen at these. I think that when I had to go see fucking old fashioned tops the hat, it was about a hundred year age difference between some people in that theater. <laughs> I'd imagine. Well, like like even like like when we went to go see uh, the Big Short, mm -hmm. we were probably the youngest people in the room by thirty years. That's happened, uh, um, I know me, that's happened to me and Dave <laughs> at some of the, uh, Christian movies. <laughs> that happened to you and Sarah at, like, uh, Kirk oh. Cameron Saving Christmas or War Room. I can't remember if it, if it was it Saving Christmas. I mean, there, there was, like, I think, like, two other, like, couples there. Or Son of God. Uh, Son of God was a little more seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> Put it that way. <laughs> oh, that's right. There were some seasoned veterans in our 13 hour screening. <laughs> the, that I get to. Like, my mom actually mentioned to me that she tried to go and watch that the other day. What, 13 hours? Uh, she was going to go. Well, uh, my, uh, my brother was in the service, so. Uh, he wanted to go see it, so they were going to go with him while they were, they were down visiting uh, mm -hmm. him and his family. And. Uh, there's a pretty large collective of veterans around where he's at. 
So they went into the theater, and it was, I guess, just packed to the fucking rafters. I was texting Lindsay last night. She was at that movie and just not having any of it. And I'm like, she's like, hold my hand through this, please. I need help. I need help. Um, and I'm like, that's when, you just, that's when you're just a jackass and just take a picture of your hand. <laughs> no, I, I was like, uh, here's what I'm watching. This is a Billy Gardell movie called Dancer and the Dame where he's partnered with a dog. It was a ripoff of K-9 in that it had exact scenes from K-9 in it. And the bad guy was David A.R. White, um, the co-founder of Pure Flix. You might know him on YouTube as the Jesus man, that guy. He's our villain. That's such a weird fucking thing to have, man. That was on Netflix. <laughs> There's well, a lot of shit on there that it probably shouldn't be. Oh, don't worry. In due time, the boy will be on there. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's. I, I got mean, it. I mean, I got some positive things I can say about yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's definitely. I, I I will give it this. It is definitely not the movie I expected it to be. No. I mean, I, I'm I'm not by any stretch saying that like you know, my entire viewpoint in this movie changed 100%, but, I mean, it's definitely not the movie that the trailer tries to sell you. But, I mean, t I think to the to the credit of the movie, that's probably actually decent marketing. Well, and considering how this movie is directed by... It, it's from the director of the granddaddy of bad January horror films, The Devil Inside... <laughs> Fuck, that's right. I forgot you told me that. <laughs> this movie is leaps and bounds better than that. <laughs> yeah, since The Devil Inside, he figured out how to do a third act. <laughs> but like The Devil Inside, <laughs> the third act of this movie kind of kills it for me. <laughs> Devil Inside, in that it didn't have a third act. This one, what they did in the third act. But that's for later. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, this, this one... Uh, it goes places. But yeah, it, I mean, by and large, like, through through the first and second acts of, the, of, of this one, like, I I was on board with it. I kind of okay. was, like, it, too, it, it, it wasn't, to a point. It wasn't terrible, but, I mean, it wasn't, like, I wasn't, like, it was, like, pants-shittingly scary, no, but... No, 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 no. But, no. It, I mean, A, as far as, like, weird, creepy doll movies go... I mean, it's better than than it's definitely better than most. But yeah, I mean, it, it has like some good atmosphere to it. Yeah, I, I think it benefits from the fact that really, like, the cast is like four people total, and it's a good. It, it it's also a solid cast. The acting is not bad in this movie. Yeah, I mean, for for it being a January release, like like you'd expect it to just be just churned out. You know, like, oh, starring someone you've never heard of or someone from, like, 30 years ago who's trying again or something. Like, But no, like, uh, that uh, uh, Lauren Cohen. Maggie from Walking Dead. Yeah, Maggie. Uh, honestly, it's... It kept throwing me the entire movie. Like, it's, she's just one of those actresses at this point that, like, like, I don't really know her from fucking anything else other than that. Like, I know she's done plenty of stuff, but, like, that's, like that role for her. So and she carries this movie fine. I mean, it's it's like, uh, oh, um, uh, what's her name in uh, The Forest from Game of Thrones? Yeah, I mean, she she did fine. It's just, <sighs> there's only so, f uh, you, you, can, you can carry a film, but I mean, mm -hmm. sometimes there's just not a lot of film to carry. <laughs> yeah. This, I mean, what I, I, this is a better movie than The Forest, but like, oh yeah, um, it's. This, I honestly think this one could have worked outside of January. I'm honestly not sure why it just ended up getting dumped. Yeah, no, th this movie. I mean, like, like I said, th there's decent things I could say about it. One, uh, one of which the doll in the movie looks like a doll somebody would own. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, it, it is off-putting looking, but it's it's yeah, it's fucking unsettling. But it's the sort of thing that like. When you see, like, the doll from Annabelle, like, who fucking bought that for their baby? Uh -huh. Who thought, you know what, you know what, my child would <laughs> love this. 
<laughs> caricature of a dead whore. This is this yeah, like it's it's uh it goes this in this movie it looks like something that honestly I would find in my grandma's house. Um I think I've seen it in your grandma's house. <laughs> and also it goes along with that action figure of um Sheldon oh, Cooper that Christ. I sent you from Chicago that it makes him look like <laughs> Lee Harvey Oswald. <laughs> this dead fucking eyes. Sheldon Harvey Oswald. <laughs> yeah, when when I was back uh when I was back down visiting my folks, I can't get reception for shit out there in the country and uh I forgot that you got bad reception up there. So like I was at one point I was like, God, is Brian okay? Like, I haven't heard from him in like three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, just just somewhere where like just a black hole in the universe. Like <laughs> Like she, she, she traveled all like in the movie. She travels all the way from Montana to the UK, yeah, to get away from like you know cell phones and Wi-Fi and all that. Oh, shit, I just gotta go like like two hours down the road to where my parents live. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's super easy, but uh, but yeah, I just had like very intermittent signal. Like whenever mm-hmm. I'd go to like the next town over, and. Uh, and yeah, like I suddenly got that. I'm like, what the shit is that? <laughs> Four primetime Emmys, my friend. <laughs> is that what it does to you? <laughs> Remind me to never give you primetime Emmys. <laughs> no, like, um, <clears throat> I like that this isn't, and it does have a few in there, but by and large, it's not a jump scare movie. Um, it really does. Man, I mean, at this point, I wouldn't have said this after seeing The Devil Inside, but after seeing this, it's like, I could... (laughs) He seems to have learned a thing or two after The Devil Inside, and there (laughs) actually is fairly decent atmosphere and mood. He, he, He does let some suspense build, and the jump scares that it has, they're far few in between, and whenever one does happen, it's eight times out of ten, it's not accompanied by a stupid-ass music sting behind it. It might just be someone off-camera just saying the person's name or yeah, something I, like that. A, a lot of times it's either, like, the the actual, like, like gotcha moment, like, mm. jump scares seem like they're, they're mostly, like, honestly, like, dream sequences. Which... That was my next point. Boy, that's something I'm getting sick of in horror movies nowadays. <laughs> the fake out dream sequence. It happens twice in this. It happened a million times in the forest. That was half that fucking movie. Yeah, that that was one of those like I, th- this is happening more than it would in like a fucking Elm Street movie. Yeah. <laughs> where honestly, where, yeah. Where ninety percent of the movie happens in their dreams. Uh huh. In this It annoyed me in this movie, too. It does it twice, where something interesting is kind of happening, and then a jump scare, which honestly does not fit the tone of the rest of the movie, and then... Company (gasps) Yeah. (gasps) Yeah. (gasps) Fucking stop. Like, it didn't need to happen. Like, the scene where she thinks she hears crying in the middle of the night, and she gets up to check on it, and then she goes... And then I'm like, okay, that could have just cut to the next morning. But no, instead she goes up to the painting of Brahms that reaches out his hand and grabs her and she wakes up. Like, that did not fit anywhere in the rest of this movie. Like, oh, and, and there's that scene very similar to that right at the beginning where she walks up and is looking at the painting and then walks away from it. Mm-hmm. So I just assumed that that one of like, like oh, and then the, the painting like really terribly looks like it grabs her. Like... I honestly just figured, like, oh, maybe that was just something for the trailer. But then, they, I mean, they exactly. ended up using it but as a dream sequence. Because, like, yeah, like, the like the, the very blatantly, like, supernatural stuff like that, like, is kind of mostly, just, yeah, just all, like, dream sequence stuff. Like, they they do, yeah, like, like I said, they do a good job of providing a lot of good uh, atmosphere. And I think, I mean, A, I mean, big creepy-ass houses definitely uh-huh. help with that. But uh, but honestly, like it seemed like uh, they're towards the beginning uh, when she's first getting used to the house and going around and doing all that. Like it honestly, like it kept giving me like a really strong vibe uh, from something like uh, 
uh, like House of the Devil. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like weird family, like, hey, come over and watch our house. And then, you know, normal. And then just like very like, because like with that, like a lot of the uh, the jump scares in that weren't necessarily like jump scares. It was just yeah. like, it's like she's not paying attention. And all of a sudden, like the phone rings as she's mm-hmm. walking past it or, you know, she's not paying attention. And then like somebody like, you know, knocking on the door. Like, yeah, like, yeah, that's what I liked too. like the, the, the jumps in this were either like those dream sequence ones or yeah, just like normal stuff. Like it's like, yeah, something just fell over next to her and startled uh-huh. the shit out of her. Like nothing supernatural, nothing weird. It wasn't like a musical thing. Like, uh-huh. no, it's just like, Something fell the fuck over and it scared the shit out of her. Yeah, I mean, it's... They... I mean, I could have done without the stuff being a dream sequence, but, like, they're really kind of building up this story in this movie, and it's... They're giving it a slow burn, and they're letting these characters breathe a while. You find out a bit of her past, and then there's this relationship that builds up between her and Rupert Evans... Um, who's, he's really good in the movie. Through a lot of this movie, um, I was watching it. I, in the first two thirds of this movie, there, um, until the reveal, um, <laughs> I was thinking like, I, I couldn't necessarily say that I would have recommended it to see in the theater because through a lot of it, even though I wasn't thinking it was bad, I wasn't scared a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seemed like it, it seemed like one of those that I mean, if if you were in like junior high, you know, or like like if you wanted something like uh like kind of scary to show like and, I, and, I, and I'm not by any means saying like this is like like feels like a kids movie but if you had something like like it like uh uh Letty's nephews mm-hmm. uh like a couple of them around like 12 or 13 a couple of them around like 7 or 8 like I think honestly they'd get a big kick out of this uh-huh. like it's 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 scary enough to where you know it's not gonna like crazy bug like the little ones but it's interesting enough that like you know like 12 and 13 like they're still gonna like yeah it's like it. plus they all like the walking dead so who doesn't like yeah. watching maggie yeah um yeah like i wasn't hating myself for watching this i wasn't miserable i was just kind of like it's just kind of not that scary like it, and some of the lines are a little stupid like <laughs> calling him bromsy and shit and i'm like i can't really <laughs> this <laughs> Uh, uh, I mean, I, I could see where it could maybe work, like, where, like, it's turning into maybe more of a psychological film, where she doesn't know if she's crazy or not, like, maybe she is kind of going crazy, but well, in this movie, like... And it, there's so many scenes where that comes up, where, like... like it is, but it's also not a mystery. The, there is something actually happening there. Like, when you bring in the second character, Rupert Evans, who then, yeah, also she, is witnessing shit okay, something's going on. This isn't just something in her head. <laughs> With a scene that was almost taken from Poltergeist. Which one? Well, just like whenever, like, uh, she's like, uh, from from the original. Like, you know, like, it's like, come here, come here, come here, come here. You got to see this, okay? It's like, set her oh. on, the, on, like, the little circle on the floor. Like, oh, okay, now step oh, back. Oh, yeah. Scoot. It's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. Like, that's what I thought of, like, that entire time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Um... I was more so thinking, like, why do you really need to draw the chalk outline around him? I mean, I like, mean he's he's obviously <laughs> vanished. <It doesn't... laughs> like, and here he is, not in the room anymore. Ta da! Um, <laughs> I was feeling through the first part, the first couple parts of it, that like, if this was a just a TV movie, this would be a pretty solid movie of the week, and I'll. <laughs> I'll bring that up again here in a sec, but um, if it, it seems like the kind of thing that, like, you know, maybe like when I was a kid and maybe watched some like TV movie that originally aired in the seventies, or um, <laughs> or like maybe if it was like a direct to like Showtime movie in the early nineties, like I, I could see myself as a kid around that time yeah. at least being entertained by this. Uh, but but then as an adult, maybe not gravitating towards it, but still being kind of like, yeah, I could see why I probably liked this. And the movies, it, it start, 
it, it started losing me a little bit. Um, not to the point to where I'd be like, oh, well, I can't recommend this movie now, but a little bit when Sinister 2 starts happening. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and then cue the abusive ex who suddenly shows up to, like, treat her like shit. To be a giant hulking cartoon. Ah. <laughs> uh... And that was so out of place and so unnecessary and such a fucking, like in Sinister 2, just such a fucking stock cliche of a character. But like, when that happened in Sinister 2, like, okay, he's from, like, the next town over. Yeah. You're out there in the country. He finally tracked you down and dragged you home. You're telling me that this, like, I don't know, whatever the fuck it is that he does. Like He watches Duck Dynasty for a living. That's what he does. <laughs> This fucking, like, blue-collar schmo from Montana yeah. is like, like, oh, I found out where she is. Well, time to book an intercontinental flight, uh -huh. go to the UK, find where she is out in the fucking countryside outside of wherever the fuck. Like, it didn't even really ever, I think, say where she was, but, I mean... Somewhere where this guy would not have found her. <laughs> yeah, and then shows up there. Uh, sneaks into the house and then just makes himself at home while she's in the other fucking room. It's like, uh huh. Okay. Either that or he has magical powers and just boop, poofed in. Oh, he shows up because they need someone for Brahms <laughs> to kill. <laughs> they realize, like, like, you know what? Now that, like, she's not actually scared of the doll anymore, uh,. Because that's what happens, like, like she's really unnerved, and it starts getting more and more unnerving, like, being around this thing. And more and more, like, aggressively startling stuff is happening. Until she finally just decides, like, well, it's either go crazy, or, like, the little, like, rule sheet that, uh, that they, they printed off for, uh, like, how to take care of him. Just do all the things on that, and suddenly, like, those two are, like, besties, and they're like... Fucking playing house and, you know, getting the, you know, doing the chores every day and everything's fine. And, like, it's at that point, it's like, this isn't really a, a horror movie anymore. Like, it's just, you know, it's like a weird drama about this woman who's living with a doll. <laughs> From the very beginning of it, I would have followed those rules. Not that I thought would have thought the doll was alive, but there's nothing else to do in that house. But yeah, like, <laughs> she's out there in the middle of nowhere with literally nothing yeah. going on like like the the only the only interaction she has with anything is um she can use the landline phone and the grocery guy uh Rupert yeah. Evans comes over like once a week mm -hmm. to drop off supplies that's it she's basically like you know when like Walter White was hiding out after he left town in the last season of Breaking Bad <laughs> she's like Jesus <laughs> there's nothing to do like I'd be going fucking stir crazy out there yeah fuck that Ugh, I'd be polishing off all that wine within like hours god damn like so yeah like I'd be yeah I'd be taking care of the doll too there's nothing else to do it's fuck like, it it's like I don't know what do you want to listen to some music cool yeah. The one record the house has. And for for most of the time, the direction was fairly solid, but there was, like, maybe 2% of this movie where suddenly it would... It would suddenly feel like it's directed by somebody else. Did you ever notice that? Where, like, all of the sudden, like, really quick edits would start in this movie and, like, yeah. go into, like, negative vision of, like, a letter and, like, whoa, did... Yeah, it, it somebody was, else take over. It was all pretty normal, but then, like, yeah, like whenever she looks over and sees that that letter there towards the end, like it kind of like quick zoom, like it's like flash, 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 flash. It's like you know, like flipping the image negative, like like looking over like big keywords on it, and then cuts back to her just standing there. It's like same with when like, like Brahms is outside so the fucking yeah. odd. Like when Brahms is outside the door and he leaves the sandwich for her. Like, there was a lot of stuff, like, damn, like, fucking slow down a sec, movie, let me get, let me catch up to you. Like, like, I know it's startling that he put out a PB and J for her, but... <laughs> yeah, you're starting to lap me here, movie. <laughs> and then, okay, um, it gets to the reveal of this movie. Then the other shoe drops. Um, <laughs> I was thinking through this movie, I, I mentioned it earlier, like, you know what, I mean, this, 
if this was like a TV movie, like a movie of the week or something like that, that wouldn't be, okay, it'd be a pretty solid movie of the week. And when the reveal happens, I now know why I was thinking that. Because the twist of this movie is the movie Bad Ronald. And you said you never saw that movie? That, that was one that I hadn't seen, but I <clears throat> but I have seen that exact same thing in a different movie, though. So. Oh, okay. In, in Bad, Bad Ronald is a movie about... A, a a kid a, a, in that mo a teen, or um, early teen I think, um, who kills a girl in the neighborhood, like Brahms in this movie, and then his mom doesn't want him to be caught by the police, so she hides him in a room in a house and builds a fake wall in front of it, so he's able to go like within all of the walls and stuff like that. And then his mom leaves to have an like an uh, like an emergency surgery, and when she's at the hospital, she dies. And then another family moves in, like Dabney Coleman and his family. <laughs> and so the kids just in the walls, like spying on the girls and doing like weird ass fucking shit. It's good. It's a really good thriller. That's the twist of this movie. The twist of this movie is Bad Ronald. The kid, Brahms, as a kid, killed some girl. And in fact, in Bad Ronald, it made sense. In this movie, it doesn't make sense. In this movie, uh, as a kid, he accidentally killed some girl, and then his parents do the same thing. They put him in a room in the walls, and he lives within the walls, but in this movie, they fake his own death. They, like, set the house on fire, and Brahms has now supposedly died in a fire. At that point, he doesn't need to be living in the walls anymore. And yeah, also, just, just make sure he's not out when company's over. Or this, these people seem rich enough to leave the country. <laughs> you see that house, though? I mean, where are they going to find real estate like that? <laughs> they could go to other stately Wayne Manor. <laughs> it's, that's the twist of this movie. It turns out the doll's not alive. It's actual Brahms, uh, not dead, just yeah, living in living inside the movie. People under the stairs. That too, yeah, huh? But yeah, like that's what I was thinking of during the chase scene. But uh, like the whole like. Uh, like person living in the walls thing like that came up to uh that movie uh the pact uh-huh uh came out here a couple years ago uh has like uh katie lots in it uh -huh. and uh uh casper van deen Ooh. <laughs> and it's like uh i fuck i can't remember uh some about it but like like this house like is like they think the house is haunted, uh huh, and it all traces back to like like some weird shit that was happening, but it just turns out like ultimately in the end that there's like a secret basement to the the place and like little peoples throughout the house, mm -hmm. and yeah, like this dude that they thought had died and whose like spirit was like yeah in the place, like no, he's just alive, like he just has like these little doors that he opens up and just like crawls up out of, <laughs> and, like does shit around the house and then like slithers back into his little hidey holes whenever nobody's looking was it more believable in that because in this i was honestly having a hard time wrapping my head around him doing all the shit he's been doing in this movie without anyone seeing him <laughs> well as they show though once he comes uh comes out of the walls he's super super quick very silent as he moves and oh, uh, he's as strong as like Jason Voorhees yeah. in like the later movies. He's as strong as the fucking ghost from the Paranormal Activity movies. He fucking chucks her across the goddamn room. Yeah, it's it, it's it's fucking preposterous. Like, like okay, I get. You know, I I will buy the whole he's moving the doll around when no one's looking. <clears throat> I'll buy the whole. He's been living in the walls for fucking... 20, Since 91. Yeah, 20-some fucking years he's been living in the walls. Or if you look at the pictures of him as a kid, he's been living in the walls since 1963. <laughs> it's one of those movies. <laughs> Although I was actually curious about when this movie was actually made, 
because <laughs> yeah, I caught that too. <laughs> his, <laughs> Brahms's headstone says uh, 1983 to 1991. Yeah, and uh, Lauren Cohen mentions it's like, oh my god, that was 20 years ago. I which was not 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's just when it was written and they just didn't bother to change the line. <laughs> like like and it's not like she said that was about 20 years ago or that was that like was 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. She says precisely that was 20 years ago. Yeah. I was thinking that. I was thinking about that too. <laughs> it's like if I was talking about like September 11th, I wouldn't say like I don't know, that was like 10 years ago. <laughs> fucking america hater <laughs> but you know what i mean like, it's very specific numbers yeah <clears throat> like i mean granted like you know like i'm not gonna fault something if like you know a movie comes out like early this year and somebody mentions like come on man it's 2015 like mm -hmm. okay well you know yeah it was filmed like eight months ago like i you know i'm not gonna piss about that but i mean that's a five year yeah. difference in what she says. I'm like, was this was this made before she started working on The Walking Dead? No, and it's I, just now coming out? Because I the guy who I don't think so, because the dude who directed it made a movie between the devil inside and this. It was Where, I think is what it was called. I think. I I'm, I think so. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But there was some other movie he made after The Devil Inside. Um, yeah, just, maybe that's just again, like I said, maybe that's just simply when this movie was written. <laughs> maybe we missed a uh, uh, a little like you know a little like text thing flash on the screen to let us know that it was actually taking place in 2011. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, that makes sense now. Random. All of my problems resolved. Like, it's just like she said that, and I looked at the, like, it shows the headstone, I'm like, no, that's, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least they bothered to put a year on it, unlike any of the dates in Texas Chainsaw 3D. <laughs> Oh man, there's no year on there. They're really tricking me. <laughs> like, oh man, when that happened to Sally Hardesty 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you're going with 20. You're sticking with that number. Texas I, Chainsaw I was ahead. You. It was ahead of its time, man. Texas Chainsaw Massacre was ahead of its time. This is barely That's ahead set. of time. <laughs> <laughs> that set all the fashion trends for 1991. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck movie. Does that make it actually a sci-fi epic at that point? Yes. <laughs> it's been sci <laughs> it's been sci-fi since the very beginning. Now it's okay if Leatherface goes in space. It's always been in keeping with the series. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, the next generation got a little sci-fi. <laughs> His fucking weird like robotic leg or yeah. whatever. Texas Chainsaw, next Control generation. Controlled by remote controls. <laughs> that movie got a little bit awesome. <laughs> Because of Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> it got a lot awesome. That, that was way too intense. <laughs> they had to cut it off and just start over. There's nowhere to go from there. Mm -hmm. Damn right. Once you got crazy ass McConaughey, like, fucking wanting to mouth a goddamn shotgun in front of you. I fucking love that guy. Me too. I don't care what anyone says. I love that fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. So, oh. Yeah, I just like how like immediately, like even now, like the, the last act of that movie is forgettable. Like there's so many more things I'd rather talk about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, like, that's the thing is like eventually like asshole boyfriend who shows up breaks like the Brahms doll and they're yeah. like it's like oh no and like shit starts like banging and shaking like you know like oh shit and let the demon out oh no mm -hmm. and then <clears throat> no he just like breaks a breaks a fucking hole in the wall and just climbs out and it's like oh shit He's just like, he looks like a homeless man wearing like that mask <laughs> from the movie. Fucking doll cast. mask. He looks like the, what was that one? Uh, uh, that, uh, was it Casanova? That, that, that teen slasher. Valentine? Valentine. That's oh, what I'm thinking yeah. Kind of looked like that. that. 
Yeah. <laughs> Casanova. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like that title better. I can ruin it. Actually, is a little better for that movie. <laughs> I, I couldn't remember what the fuck it was called. It was one of the, that era of slasher movies. It, know, it was to man. the point where it's like, oh, good, it's another guy in black wearing a mask. I've stopped giving a shit. Like, handsome people on the cover, mask behind them. That era. <laughs> fuck off with that shit. Glad that's over with. Uh, I'm trying to think, like, what would I... Would I be as annoyed with this movie had I not seen Bad Ronald? Um... I think I still would have had some problems with the resolution because dumb shit really does happen in it. Like, it becomes this cheap kind of chase movie and he's just fucking throwing her all over the place. Oh, yeah, and just, like, like shit, like, they're, like, sneaking through the walls. Like, oh, well, well, instead of just getting out of the house, they decide to, like, duck through his little hidey holes. They go all through the house. But he knows those, uh-huh. and he just keeps going around, just like suddenly, he's like bursting through the wall, trying to snatch at him, and then like ducks back out. Yeah, and it's just, like this is like some like two, three hundred year old, you know, like stately manner, and yeah. he's just blowing through the fucking walls like they're made out of like paper mache. It's like you said in the theater; he's been doing nothing but push ups this yeah. entire time. Fucking apparently, because even like like. She, she pulls like a, uh, uh, who is it? Uh, Amy Steele in uh, Friday mm-hmm. the Thirteenth Part Two. She does that and just like, you know, starts ordering him around, like yeah. sticking to the rules. Like now, Brahms, it's time for bed, and he just mm-hmm. stops. Like, okay, I'll stop my murder rage and just go to bed. Jason, mother is talking to you. But then, like, she does something that he doesn't agree with, and he realizes this is stupid. And just, like, from a laying down prone position in bed, just puts his hands like that and just pushes her and throws her, like, ten feet into the air against a wall. And cracks the motherfucking wall. And then grabs her, like, just by both hands, just lifts her, like, a foot and a half off the He's ground while, stu- <laughs> like, choking her. It's like, it's like, seriously, what has he just been doing behind the walls there every day, all day, just... Got like a fucking pull-up bar back there. He's just going at it. Becoming Michael Myers. <laughs> <laughs> fucking apparently. God. That was always my question with Halloween. Is like, what the fuck? Did, like, okay, I get he's he's a closed off, you know, like, it's like, you know, he's always got the evil in his eyes. It's just black. It's like, okay. And then what? You take him out to the yard and he lifts weights all day? Like But that's what what happened with that? I don't have I don't have that uh question about the first Halloween, because in Halloween one and Halloween two, he's like my height. Well yeah, and he looks like a normal enough guy until he starts getting <laughs> starts getting a little bit bigger there. Yeah, he gets bigger in between two and four when he's been in a coma. Somehow that puts a whole fucking foot and a half on him. It makes him shove a shotgun through a motherfucker's chest. <laughs> the fuck? It's even it's even weirder to think of when you look at like the Rob Zombie ones. This oh. chunky little annoying kid, and then he turns into like a seven foot tall, yeah. six foot wide son of a bitch. It's like. What the fuck are they doing at Smith's Grove? <laughs> that didn't even make sense in that movie, and that was a self-contained movie. <laughs> I don't buy that this kid turned into that. <laughs> I don't buy that he suddenly grew up and he was older than Sherry Moon Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> That's like if, like, Kane Hodder showed you a picture of him as a child and it was Haley Joel Osment. <laughs> It's like, no, that tracks. That that makes sense. <laughs> I don't fifteen years fifteen years later, K <laughs> Yeah. It's like he's been putting in his time all day. He's got that Sarah Connor workout. He just waits till they do lights out and flips his bed up and just does pull ups. <laughs> Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> to, to be fair, that is someone like that. That actually does resolve that for me a little bit. Like that is someone in an asylum who mm-hmm. did get their pump on. They. Like, she was fit as shit. Damn right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, they turned her weak again in Terminator Genesis. <laughs> yeah, I saw the other day they turned her so weak that they canceled the other two movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I wanted to see where that fan fiction was going. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I I I don't know. If I got a final thought on this, it's just like 
if you wanted to remake Bad Ronald, just remake Bad Ronald. <laughs> the direction of this wasn't that bad. Like, it, you probably could have made a fairly decent remake of Bad Ronald if you wanted. Now I'm just like, now I just want to go back and watch that movie. <laughs> <laughs> but at the, you know what? At the end of the day, even with that being said, like it's it it it's not a bad movie. Like if the if I watch this on like fucking Netflix, fine, whatever. Yeah, I, I've seen so it's like so many that are so far worse than this. Mm-hmm. Like on Netflix or even honestly here at the theater. Oh but, Lord, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's the sort of thing like like you know, if, if you have friends that are already coming to see this, like go ahead and go. It's you know, you're not gonna be like. It, it, it I, I didn't come out of it feeling like we got ripped off for going to see it. Uh, no. Or, you know, if, like... You know, honestly, like, if you want something vaguely non-threatening, like, you know, if you if you have, like, a, you know, like, younger, like, you know, adolescent tween, you know, in the house, like, they honestly will probably be fine with this. Like, you know, if you have a kid that was, like, fine with the movie, like, uh... Like, don't be afraid of the dark. Uh-huh. This would go over just fine. So, I mean, it's, it's yeah, it's it's not it's not a disappointing film. It's just not the strongest out there. And, no. But, and, and again, like, if you think of it, though, like, in terms of, of where this director started and where he's at now, I mean, Jesus Christ, this might as well be a fucking Coppola film by comparison. Lord, yeah. He also did that Stay Alive, that one with the video game that killed people. That like, was, Adam Goldberg was in it. Yeah. That was him. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was him. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> I miss Adam Goldberg. Wait, what did I just see him in recently? Oh, I watched the season one of Fargo. He's in that. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's, he's fucking weird as shit in that. No, I just assumed you're that. like, it's like, what have I seen him in? All right, yeah, no, you've been rewatching Friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will always know him as Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> he's always such a weird fucking guy. The fucking Hebrew hammer. <laughs> he's saving. He's in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, I was like that guy. He's one of those weird actors that, like, when you see him in a weird role, it's like, that makes sense. But then when you see him in, like, a very serious, dramatic role, it's like, I can buy it. Yeah, he can be <laughs> tense. He can be tense as shit. And he still has the same haircut he had as Eddie from Friends. Oh, yeah, he, he doesn't look like he's changed <laughs> since, like, 95. <laughs> like, he's just exactly the same. It was like, that is him. <laughs> uh, I, in terms of... Um, it, it's January, and if you have to see a horror movie in the theater <laughs> in January, this is about the best you're gonna get. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I honestly think that this probably could have held its own in a different month. I could see it have been released in October. Uh, I would have the same exact opinion that, about it, but but yeah, I mean, I, that's honestly the best. Like, the most glowing praise I think I could give to it right at the moment is just, if it had been released in a different month, I wouldn't have thought anything about it. Uh, And I know that it's not fair to the movie, but I did kind of go into it with not exactly high hopes or favorable Uh opinions, just because it's a January horror film. We're getting to the point where, like, that's its own fucking genre. Like, there's horror films, and then there's January horror (laughs) films. Yeah, yeah. So... I'm just glad to see a movie in January that's not going to probably be one that I talk about next January when I'm rounding up the worst things I've seen this year. No, this movie would not even come close to being on any kind of worst of the of the year list. I mean, hell, like I said, I can at least recommend this as like a, a Netflix movie. You, you, you go for it. And yeah. if if this if this is one of the worst I've seen all year, then we're going to have a pretty good year. Yeah, like, <laughs> if this is the bottom, like, fuck it, I'm good. Because that was even my thing. Like, I went into this expecting, like, it's like, all right, here we are. I think this is, like, the second movie I've seen in January so far. So that's that's going to be two shit ones right off the bat here. <laughs> it's like, all right, I've at least got, like, one-fifth of my, my bottom ten filled right here if need be. It's way better than The Forest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> and... It's better than uh, 
well, no, I, I don't want to be unfair because I haven't seen it yet, but I'm guessing it'll be better than Fifty Shades of Black. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and like you mentioned, the fours, like that, 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 I, I wanted to mention that too. Like, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned that earlier that this movie kind of lets every, like, Gives you time with the characters, lets the the story breathe a little, lets the characters yeah, breathe a little. Yeah, it does. But yeah, that, that that was, you know, a thing I was worried about that it'd have the same sort of pacing issues that I I kind of had with the Forest. That that movie, like it, it, it was running at a breakneck fucking speed. Though, yeah. Like, within ten minutes of starting, the five minute you know, weird montage prologue leading up to her getting to Japan, and then five minutes later she's lost in the goddamn woods. Yeah, this movie doesn't do that. This movie does not do that at all. It doesn't feel like anything is missing in this movie to cut it down to 90 minutes. The Blair Witch Project took longer to get to the fucking woods. Yeah, <laughs> you're fucking right. <laughs> yeah, no, this... The, it, yeah, this movie didn't feel like it was just a slapdash of editing to get it to, like, a suitable running time. You know, it, it, I feel like if, if you look at this as far as, like, like yeah, it took a lot of inspiration from fucking half a dozen movies. Like, like if, if you're watching this, if you watch a lot of horror films, you'll be watching this thinking of, like, every movie you can think of that it compares to. Uh-huh. But, I mean, just even if you think of it like that, like, you know, like, compared to, like, the material it's pulling from... It's not a terrible, you know, like, it's not like, a, like you were saying, like, you know, some movies is just like, oh, this is a direct scene taken exactly from this movie. Like, it's, it's a lot of similar stuff, but I mean, at least it doesn't like. It directly takes from Bad Ronald. Well, <laughs> like, this movie should be called Bad Brahms. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, I just mean, like, as far as like, it's like, wow, this scene is even framed the same type shit. Oh, like, I mean. Like, no, I mean it, it looks like a movie of t it. Like I said, I mean it. Fe it feels like something I could be watching that's made for TV. But visually speaking, I mean, yeah, you can tell the movie was made today. Yeah, at least it's, you know, like it, it seems like it treats the when you're really call it source material, but you know, stuff that it's pulling from, like, like it knows that it's not better than what it is. No, you know, I mean, it, it, yeah. It, I I feel like to a degree, like this movie knows that it's like it's like yeah, this is like the poor man's like. You know, like Guillermo del Toro type movie, sure, but, but you know, it's comfortable with it. It never like that's my thing. Like it, it doesn't like it doesn't try to make you think that this is like the next big thing. No, like, I don't. It, it seems like it's comfortable knowing that like like this is the extent of what we can push, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It doesn't think it's The Shining by any stretch, and but at the same time, it's not a cynical film. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's not bordering on parody, but I just mean like mm -hmm. it's not like it's not like trying like overly lofty things to come off kind of pretentious. Like that was a problem I had with like some of the stuff that it was doing in like, like the forest was like, you know, like you're trying for some like really deep, meaningful stuff, but nothing you've done is set that up. So it's not going to happen. It just comes across as like yeah. vaguely confusing and mildly offensive that you think that like, this is going to like suddenly bring up your movie. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, like it, it's, it, it's just, it, it's a movie. Yeah. It's a movie. It's okay. It's not awful. Um, <laughs> nah, yeah. I mean, in a couple of days, uh, next up we got, um, yeah, 50 shades of black and, in the heart of the sea to the finest hours. <laughs> I wonder if they'll finally get that goddamn whale. They fucking better. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am going to be pissed. <laughs> seen too many movies on boats. <laughs> yeah. I've seen one and that's too many. At, so. least, at least we're knocking them out in about a month's time. <laughs> True. <laughs> See it. <laughs>